Hey everybody and welcome back. I am Eric for President and you know the drill, your one stop shop for 5 VR stories you missed over the past couple of days. And it's a heavy Oculus related episode and for good reason. We have Quake 2 officially able to be played on the Oculus Quest, a couple Oculus Quest updates coming including mixed reality and dark mode, and we also need to talk about Facebook did a thing, and they bought Beat Saber so yeah I can't uh... Can't wait to read the comments on that one, and we got a little bit more to talk about as well. A couple housekeeping items. Number one, Joe claimed his Oculus Quest faster than I ever thought he would. So congrats again, Joe. That will be shipped today. But the current Twitter post does have over 700 retweets. We get it to a thousand. We'll be giving away another Oculus Quest in December, and I'm gonna find ways to give out more in the next year as well because this channel is about getting more people into VR, so if I can give away headsets, I absolutely will. And lastly, make sure to stay on top of the community post in the pinned comments. It pays to be part of the notification squad because any extra keys I get, which has been quite a bit lately, I'm gonna be giving away those first come first serve. Check the pinned comment in this video and you may be getting the first key I'm giving away, an awesome Oculus Quest game. But that's enough rambling, let's get into the VR news. Cheers. Dr. Beef not only has the best name, but he does the best things for the Oculus Quest, and Quake 2 is now playable on your Oculus Quest through SideQuest. Quake 2, released way back in 1997, and to many of us, was the definitive first-person shooter experience that defined the introduction to gaming for a lot of us, and that's including myself. Created by Dr. Beef, the APK file is available on SideQuest right now. The beta of Quake to Quest will include the first three levels to play for free of the game, and once Quake 2 is purchased, you will have the rest available to you then and the game is only $5. The beta includes full 6 degrees of freedom room scale, two-handed weapons from our immersion, super sampling is standard for increased clarity, and 10 OG badass weapons and full head tracking support is available. My experience playing Quake 2 through SideQuest, it ran great, it looked great, it's just a lot of fun and I highly recommend it, but I think this game is more important just because it's Quake 2 and fun. It's familiar to a lot of people, a lot of people who do not have VR, and I think games like this that are ported are very important, because it takes a game that people are familiar with, and puts it in a new way they can play it. Now they can enjoy the games they liked way back in the day, but now in VR, it's a whole new sensation, and I think things like this bring new VR users, but I pass that off to you. Are old games, old ports like this, brought to the Oculus Quest or VR in general? Are they important, are they useful, or are we backtracking where we should be progressing? I'm very interested to hear your comments. Moving right along, you may remember in the past there were rumors that the Xbox Scarlet may have VR support because it did have a display port in the back, and there were rumors that could indicate a future partnership between Xbox Scarlet and the Oculus Rift S. And those rumors were nixed very hard and very recently. In an article posted November 26th on Survivor.com, Phil Spencer has nixed these thoughts and says VR is not a focus of Project Scarlet at all. He actually goes the harshest route, although with some truth, and we'll get into that, we're responding to what our customers are asking for, and nobody's asking for VR. He elaborates as follows, I have some issues with VR, it's isolating, and I think of games as a communal, kind of together experience. We're responding to what our customers are asking for, and nobody's asking for VR. The vast majority of our customers know that if they want a VR experience, there's places to go to get those. So of course I'm biased in the situation, I think they're terribly wrong, terribly, terribly wrong on this, and I think many of you in the comment section are gonna think that as well. As a consumer, and I'm gonna say me because I don't wanna speak for anyone else, but I don't know what I want. I do not know what I want. There are many devices, many gadgets, many tools that I use in my day-to-day -day life that I never thought I wanted, never knew I needed, However, when they made it and they took that chance and presented it to me, I adopted it because it was a great product and helped me tremendously and I had a lot of fun with those. By Microsoft choosing not to get into VR, they're choosing to lose. They're choosing to stay behind the curve and I just can't get behind that. Sony even wants them to get into the VR game because they understand the competition is good. But Microsoft is choosing to listen to the consumers when instead they should be choosing to innovate to move forward and provide consumers what they may not even know that they want. I think it's a terrible decision on their part. VR is going to be a huge part of the future scene and they should get into it now along with Sony and everyone else. But that's just my opinion. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this. Do you think Microsoft is making a huge decision? And if you do, tell me why. I'm sure there's many different reasons why people think that and I'm interested to see those. Let's also talk about mixed reality, something I think is very important to the VR scene, especially when trying to get new VR users. And it's something that's very hard to do in the Oculus Quest, but by the end of the year, it may be something that's very easily doable. Most why known for videos of Beat Saber first introduced by the software Live, spelled L-I-V, and used by many YouTubers like Otterworldly, it creates a fun way to showcase the VR experience. As of now, doing it on the Oculus Quest is an effort in futility, but Zoka Studios is bringing mixed reality to the Oculus Quest using an iPhone only, no green screen required. You can see it in action here as provided on the Zoka's YouTube channel, and it is really fun to see how it is done with an iPhone only. 
As of now, this is only iPhone specific and they are trying to release it by the end of the year. VR is one of the hardest things to get new users because there's no frame of reference for them to choose to get into VR, so it's very hard to convince new users to go to something so unfamiliar, but one way to make it familiar for them is to show them footage. However, showing gameplay footage of VR is very hard because the way games are, it's very shaky, snap turning can cause a lot of distortion of the video, and it's just not an overall great experience to watch VR gameplay sometime. However, with mixed reality, it makes it a lot more fun a lot more manageable and a lot more entertaining to watch where they can understand what you're doing in the game and also what they see on screen. I think mixed reality is a great way to get new VR users to make it fun, to make it interesting, and the fact that Zoka Studios is doing something to make that easier for Oculus Quest users, I personally find that a net gain, but let me know what you think on this down in the comments. Alright, let's do it. Let's tackle this whole Facebook buying Beat Saber. Oh man, I can't wait to read through all these comments on how quick Facebook's gonna ruin this game. But I will say this, this story just broke at the time of basically filming this video. So these are my gut reactions. I, over time, my <laughs> initial impressions may change greatly on this. But these are my initial reactions to this story breaking, and I'm very interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments, but let's get into it. In a breaking news article first seen on Oculus blog and also reported on Upload VR by Ian Hamilton, Facebook had this to say about why they acquired Beat Games. Beat Games is a strong team with proven potential across VR, games, and music. With the resources and know-how that we can offer, Beat Games will be able to accelerate, adding more music and more exciting features to Beat Saber, as well as bringing the game to more people. And lastly, yes, this is all a wall of text, but I want to highlight this section about custom song support. We understand and appreciate the value that modding brings to Beat Saber when done so legally and within our policies. We're going to do our best to preserve the value that mods bring to the Beat Saber player base. As a reminder, our most recent policy updates give more clarity to how developer mode is intended to be used, such as helping developers build their apps or for enthusiasts to explore new concepts. It is not intended for engaging in piracy or illicit modding, including mods that infringe on third-party IP rates or contain malicious code. So let's tackle basically the two parts of this, basically what's going to change with the merger and also custom songs, because I know that's important to everyone. First of all, what I really think this is all about with the merger, I don't think anything drastic is going to change. Looking at Beat Games particularly, they're a small studio, they're not able to swing their D around like Facebook is to say it lightly. Facebook has the bigger stick here and I think Facebook just sees the money train that this has. It's a giant studio, a giant game, giant potential and they're going to be able to bring on more songs, more artists, more song packs in a much quicker, more efficient way and I expect more songs to be coming out much quicker that way they can just rake in the dollars. I think that's really 99.9% .9 what this is all about but that's my gut reaction to it. Now custom song support. I'm going to say this real, real bluntly and real quickly, my initial gut reaction, 99.9% .9 chance I don't think custom song support is going anywhere. I don't think it's in their interest, it's not in our interest, it's not in Beat Saber's interest. I personally, my gut reaction, and I may change my opinion on this over time, but I don't think custom song support is going anywhere. What I would advise though in the meantime is I would disable any automatic updates you do have for games. That way if an update does come to Beat Saber that would potentially take away custom song support, you can choose whether that gets downloaded or not. But I do want to say my gut reaction is that Beat Saber custom songs are not going anywhere. But of course, looking down in the comment section probably immediately after this video post, We'll be reading comments after comments after comments about how Facebook is going to ruin this game and Custom Song Sports going to go down the shitter really quick and we'll see how that plays out. Now if you're visually vain like myself, I hate light mode. I can't use light mode on Twitter, I can't use light mode on YouTube, and I hate light mode on the Oculus Rift S store, and that's why I go to dark mode on that. And you can now do that for the Oculus Quest users using the Oculus link, and it's a very easy thing to do, so I wanna share that with you. Originally posted by Printbird on Reddit, for those using the Oculus link, you'll notice when you boot everything up, you are greeted to the standard Rift S home visuals, including everything bright white. There is a simple way to change this to dark mode by renaming a texture and this will grant you a much more pleasant experience to the eyes overall. In the Oculus install directory, which I'll put in the description and on screen here, delete grid plane 006 and rename 007 back to 006 and in doing so you will get a screen similar to this. Overall, it's a much more pleasant view to the eye and invites me to play around in there and explore a little bit more. Now it is minor, but I think it's useful because a lot of times when I jump into the Oculus Rift S home when it's white, all I want to do is jump into the game as quick as possible. But with the dark mode, my eyes hurt a little less and I'm a little more inclined to play around with the store, go to different settings and explore my Oculus Quest to get the most out of it. It's minor, but I think it's fun. And if these small tips help you, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to do more in other videos. With that being said though, leave a like to support this video, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to never miss an upload. Join the Spaceship on Patreon, everything in there just gets reinvested back in the channel so we can provide more keys, headsets, fun and activities for you all. And for the last time in this studio, 
I will see you in the next one, VR Space Cowboys. Cheers.